Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another interview here. My name is Brian Gregory, and I've got a little Iron Bowl special here. I'm interviewing Paul Feinbaum, the mouth of the South here today. Paul, how, how are you doing today? Brian, you're doing great. I appreciate the, your invitation. Absolutely. I'm, I'm very excited to interview you. You're my first sports personality I've talked to. I've, I've done business owners. I've done priests before. So this, this is like, this is a high stakes interview. This is, the, this is the first thing like this I've ever done. So without further ado, let's dive in. Let's go. All right. So the passion of these fan bases down here, it's, it's unmatched. Like you got here in Alabama, Georgia, Auburn, Ole Miss. How do you frame your show to embrace and capture that intensity down here? Well, the, the, the back story of the, of the show is, is this, that I spent the biggest majority of my career in Birmingham, so I got to know the Alabama-Auburn rivalry uh, quite intensely. When we went to uh, the SEC Network, we broadened that, but the, but the key to, in my mind of any successful show is to not get bogged down in trying to you know, put this, you know, make sure every little thing is mentioned. Is you, you go with the, the moment, uh, what, what, what matters, what people are talking about the, the most. And I think that's really what we've done. So, we, you know, one day it could be LSU beating Alabama. The next day it could be you know, where, where Lane Kiffin is going. Uh, next week, obviously, it's going to be Georgia and LSU. So you don't, you, don't, you, you have to be cognizant of, of what people want to hear. And how, how do you decide on a topic? Like, do you have a, a production meeting before the show decides what you're going to talk about? Do you think about it over the weekend? Well, you know, when you do a show five days a week, it, it always evolves. You know, we've got a crew and. You're, you have to. You can't just wait till the day of the show. So you're lining up guests, uh, like a, like a program, like I'm about to do. I mean, we're in Tuscaloosa. There's no mystery. You're doing uh, everything related to this weekend. But for next Wednesday, you'll know uh, you're th three days away from the SEC championship. Uh, but you have to leave room in the show. You know, what if this coach leaves? Or what if yeah. that? So you just can't. I mean, there've been plenty of times when you know, we th we thought we had a great show, and then something happens, and you got some really good guests and you're going, can we get rid of this guy? Yeah. You know, there's a much hotter story going. Did, did, did you ever have to cut somebody off? Oh, sure. I once uh, had to tell, uh, uh, this is a long time ago, but uh, I once had to uninvite the, the former Secretary of State, Condoleezza Rice, from our, our radio show because it had taken months to set up the interview. She was going to be in town on the very day, was it two hours uh, before she uh, was supposed to be in our studio in Birmingham. Uh, this controversy erupted about 12 years ago with Cam Newton on whether he'd been paid to go to Auburn. And, uh, it, it, it took some great diplomacy to, to give the former Secretary of State off the ship without her knowing. Did you? Did, don't tell her. No, no, no. My, my mouth is zipped. Trust me. Did, 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 did you have to like call her? Now, how's it look like? Did, well, you, did you, you call you, her? You, you find a way where you make it uncomfortable. You, you kind of let them make the decision. We. We changed the time, and she said, well, I can't do that. And oh, I see. So then you, you let them bow out gracefully. It's kind of very st strategic how you execute it. Yeah. It's like dating. That's cool. Th very much like dating, a lot of similarity. <laughs> so you've got a lot of different personalities on your show, right? I mean, you've got head coaches, journalists, reporters, athletic directors, and they have a lot of different personalities. So how do you factor those personality differences in your preparation for each guest? Well, you, you, you always prepare, but I, I try to, and I'm, I'm sure the people over at the communication school would, don't want to hear this, but I try not to over-prepare. You can never be over-prepared for an interview. You never want to be in an interview when you, you're, rather, you're running out of things to say, but you also have to leave flexibility. Uh, I have a unique interviewing style where I'm more, I know where I want to go, but I'm more interested in what the person is saying because I could dictate what the next question is as opposed to, Okay, I have question four is this. You can, too many interviewers, I think, you know, get caught up in that. I, I definitely, I, I, th I tried to implement that myself too. I mean, it, it just happened on our last question. I, I found a list of about 10 questions I want to ask you. I found out we have a quick interview slot today, so I had to condense that sure. down. And then in our last question, I heard things I liked. So I want to know more about yeah, it, you, you know. You can, you can prepare for six months for an interview, but you better be listening to the first answer um, because you, you, I learned that as a newspaper reporter where you're, you're trying to interview people without showing emotion. Somebody just said something dramatically important and you don't, wanna, you don't want them to know that, hey, there, there it is. So you, you want people, I think a key to any good interview is always to get the person to want to keep talking. Yes. 
Yes, did, what do you, what's your approach to that of, about loosening your, your guests up? Well, you want them to be comfortable, but I'm, I'm, I'm opposed to spending too much time with them before the interview for this reason. They may say something really funny, really, and then when you interview them on camera, for instance, or behind a microphone, they may think, well, I've already told you that. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the great talk show hosts never, nice. never want to talk to a comedian before they come on, because comedians love to say, hey, have you heard this one? And you don't want the guy to say, well, I, as I told you earlier, you just like, no. So you, you, you basically just walk in, and then you want the person to be extemporary. That, that, that's good to know. I, I never thought about that before. Like if, you, if you sit down and listen to somebody for a while, it can, you kind of like drain the content. Ooh, that's interesting. I, mean, I interviewed a football player once who, had, who was part of one of the most famous plays in NFL history. and I got to the big play because I, I mean, I'd interviewed him before and he said, you know, I've told you this before. You don't want that to... Yeah, that's awkward. Yeah, you want the, you want the audience to hear it, think they're hearing it for the first time. Mm, interesting stuff. I, I never thought about it like that before. So this one kind of pertains to the matchup looking at this weekend. So you've got a situation like Auburn right now. They fired Brian Harson halfway through the season. We got a head coaching vacancy. As a sports media personality, how do you approach that situation when it comes to your show? Well, you talk about it, but in the Harson case, it had been talked about so much that the firing was almost a relief. Uh, there was nothing more to say. And then fans love nothing more than to speculate who's the next coach, whether it's who the next coach is at Auburn, who the next coach will be at Ole Miss if Lane Kiffin takes it. You could have uh, a conversation every day in Tuscaloosa. Who do you think is going to replace Nick Saban? Uh, when? Everyone has an opinion. So those are great questions that have really no, 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 no answer. Uh, but fans almost enjoy the speculation more than they do the games because it's, everybody thinks they know something. Oh yeah, when you get into those conversations with, with people, like they, they're trying to use every piece of maybe intel that they have. It's, it, it's almost, it's like un unwrapping a mystery, and, and, and it, there's an interesting element to that. Yeah, no, it is a mystery, um, and that's why mysteries are so good, because you don't know how they're going to end. Um, and everyone also knows someone who knows someone who heard something who thinks they know something. So, uh, you know, my job is just to listen to all the conversations and not try to act like I know too much, because sometimes I do, and most of the time I don't, and just let it happen. So how, how, when there's, especially now we've got like phones and that sort of thing, so falsified information, so that's become really yeah, careful. You, you, how you, do you sit through you, that? You have to be careful, because uh, there's a lot of misinformation out there, and you just have to be particularly cognizant of Going, okay, it doesn't matter that somebody tweeted it. It doesn't matter that somebody put it on a blog. It doesn't matter that somebody said it on a radio show. Is it true? Uh, and be careful. Uh, and I always talk to young people about misinformation. It, it, no matter what, you, everybody think is trying to be a comedian on Twitter mm -hmm. or whatever social media out there. Don't, don't, don't be so funny because that whatever you say is going to come back to you. Oh yeah, I mean, stuff gets, especially if it's interesting intel, like stuff's going to get retweeted and, and retweeted, and then if, it, if it's false, then you, you, you end up looking, you know, stupid. you know, you get stupid, stupid, <laughs> to put it lightly, stupid, you know, you, you lose all your credibility. I mean, I, I saw the one last week about Lane Kiffin, that, like, there's somebody literally put a report out that he's going to be Auburn's ex-head coach, and then he keep pinned it, and he's like, no, this, is, this doesn't happen. So, you know, it's, it, it happens every day, and it's, it's something, you know, you got to keep your eye out for it. It's, it, it, it's a... A new element of the media world, I'm sure. Absolutely. So yesterday, Thanksgiving Day, there was a commercial that came on my TV on CBS. I was watching the Lions game, and it, it, it was eerie. I, I, being a 2000s child, I didn't like it at all. It was uh, the SE, the um, Big Big Ten on CBS, and there was something about that that, that just did not sit well with me. And now, SEC is going to be covered by ESPN. What's what's your how's, how's your role going to change with what, once that's implemented? Well, I don't think what we'll do changes very much other than we will have every game on ESPN and the SEC. Uh, I mean, right now we have every game we want. The only game that uh, ESPN or the SEC network doesn't have is this 2.30 CBS game. Unfortunately, that's usually the best game of the week. Uh, so yeah. uh, uh, that contract will go into effect probably in two years, and then the Big Ten games will be all over the place. They'll be on Fox and countless other networks. So, uh, I mean, we're already, I mean, I work, I, I work for ESPN, but I, my, my show is on the SEC network, so it was hard to be uh, more in on the SEC. 
The biggest uh, change on top of that is going to be uh, Texas and Oklahoma coming in. So yeah. So suddenly emerging two, two completely different fan bases. So, yeah, the next couple of years are going to be really traumatic. How, how have you been preparing yourself for the introduction of the Longhorns and the Sooners? Are you, are you starting to research well, that? Yeah, I mean, once that happened, I mean, we started getting a lot of calls and, and viewers and listeners from Texas and Oklahoma. So you, you're always cognizant of that. You talk about them. But they're still in the Big 12, so you can't spend too much time on them. Yeah, but right now they're still in the Big 12. Let me tell you, that's that's going to be one change that that's really going to help your show up because those are – Especially Texas, those are massive fan bases that's going to work wonders for you guys. So I'm really excited that moving forward, and congratulations on you guys being able to, 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 to like the SEC in general, being able to land those two teams. I'm, I'm excited for the future of our conference. It's, you know, college football is only getting better, and I'm happy that you and I are along on the ride for it together. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yes, thank you, Paul, for joining me today. Excellent interview. My pleasure. And enjoy that game tomorrow. Okay. Roll Tide. Have a great day.